Good morning to you. Mark Sutt of HurricaneTrack.com here. Going to talk about what's going on in the Atlantic. We're going to have two updates today. Probably two updates going forward, at least as my time allows. Uh, but definitely two updates today. One here in the morning hours and then one later this afternoon. Once we get a look at the morning model guidance. And of course, as you can see from the title card there, uh, we're talking about invest areas 97L, 98L. And just a real quick refresher Maybe for some of you, the first time you've heard, what exactly is a 97L? Well, think of it this way. You get these disturbances out in the Atlantic or the Pacific. doesn't matter where they are. You get a, a disturbance, um, a, a tropical wave, an area of interest. And instead of just calling them areas of interest, the National Hurricane Center and just the overall um, academics and scientists, I, you know, weather organizations around the world, assign these numbers 90 through 99 and then in the case of the L that means Atlantic so it's normally actually AL 98 but we in the weather world call it 98 L because it's just easier to say so L is for Atlantic E would be Eastern Pacific W for Western Pacific like that that's how that works so once you get to 99 L then you go back to 90 L and it's just a way to designate resources, satellite floaters, where you just zoom in on those particular areas of interest, computer models, whatever. It's just a way to keep up with what's what. Instead of saying this disturbance and that disturbance, that one's 97L in orange, the one in red is 98L. All right? So that's how you do that. All right, so as we get started here, I want to clear something up. Uh, a couple of folks yesterday were suggesting that I was pronouncing this incorrectly. Well, according to the East Pacific Basin Storm Pronunciations Guide from the National Hurricane Center, uh, if, if I'm understanding it, that's Genevieve. Genevieve. You know, J-E-H is je. I don't think it's je. And if it is, I wouldn't even know how you phonetically put out there je. So I'm going to call it Genevieve until... Um, I guess somebody from maybe when um, Ken Graham can call me uh, and Mark this is Ken Graham from the National Hurricane Center it's actually Genevieve and maybe it is but I, I think that's Genevieve anyhow Genevieve here in the Pacific uh, prompting tropical storm watches and warnings for portions of the Baja luckily no direct impacts but the wind field is big enough and it's probably going to expand a little bit uh, as it moves north and northwest and begins to unwind and defocus all that energy. And, <coughs> excuse me, when it does so, um, the office is dry today. It'll, it'll maybe bring some of those tropical storm winds to the coast. High waves will be coming up here, surf, etc. Uh, but that's about it, you know, in terms of direct impacts. This is the closest that you've had to deal with something this season and I'm still hopeful that maybe as this gets up into this region that some of that moisture can get sloughed off into the desert southwest or maybe southern California, northwest Mexico. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. You can see it on satellite here. Very well defined. A little bit less in the way of deep convection uh, associated with Genevieve here or Genevieve. See, you got me paranoid now. But look, there's some of that high level moisture coming out from the north side of it. Uh, loosely associated with the overall envelope of energy over here. So maybe this whole batch can get up here and slough some of that moisture up this way. That'd be pretty nice. Maybe you can get some uh, a renewed monsoon surge to tone down some of that heat out there. Just an extraordinary 600 decameter ridge out here over the west. And if you know what that is, that's a very thick area of high pressure just parked out over the west over here like a big bullseye. And that's what it looks like in, in the height field. Uh, it's literally a dome of air. And um, this isn't going to budge much, and this uh, Genevieve won't be able to run right into this. That's why it's not going to come up into the Gulf of California or come north right on into Mexico, this big fat ridge of high pressure uh, sitting out over the west and keeping things very hot, as you know. All right, so uh, back to the Hurricane Center homepage, of course. From my title card, you saw this already, 97, 98L. And let's just go over quickly what we know about these systems, and I'm going to give you a couple things to 
think about and look for, and then we will address that in the afternoon discussion. I'm going to try to make these shorter, more to the point. You know, the Monday discussions are always longer, but as we get into this, just a little bit more focused on uh, the here and now, a little bit of what to look forward to, and then we'll take it up again later in the afternoon. All right, so here's 97L, and this is the most concerning right now because I feel like we've seen this play before, where we get a system that tried to develop. We know that they rarely ever do in this area of the Caribbean. It's usually kind of this graveyard, as we call it, um, and not much happens. It's more like a vacant lot uh, than a graveyard. I mean, a lot of stuff does come in here and die off, so I guess the graveyard... Uh, analogy works but we've seen it before where they come in they don't do much and then they kind of come back to life over here and sometimes they go to Mexico uh, sometimes they just kind of die away over Central America the Yucatan but sometimes they come up here and make landfall in parts of <clears throat> South Texas and then linger over here creating an epic flood you remember that that was just three years ago with Harvey and you know no two situations are the same but you just don't go to sleep on these systems it doesn't look like much now neither did Harvey I remember the very in my mind uh, humorous famous tweet from Josh Morgerman you know I cyclone um, Harvey came in died out and it looked like he was trying to come back and I think Harvey Harvey <laughs> Josh posted some kind of a, a picture and it looked like like a hand or something, I can't remember, poking up out of a grave like a zombie coming back, something like that, and it said, Harvey, is that you? And I thought that was very clever, because that's exactly what happened, these sort of zombie systems, and nobody calls them that you know, in the scientific community, but in pop culture we understand, right? We know what that means. They can come back to bite you, to take the Walking Dead reference there, and other zombie movies. It's true, you can't, you can't ignore these systems the energy doesn't look like much now through satellite. You go, ah, that's nothing. But just wait. It's not what it is now, necessarily, that's concerning. And it is a little problematic because you got the ABC Islands down here, Aruba, Bonaire, Curacao, uh, and some of that moisture will affect that area. All right, so that's important. And then, of course, we do have 98L out here, a huge envelope of energy, and we will need to be watching that close as well. But it's still far enough out into the Atlantic. We don't have to worry about it too much for the time being. Now this is really really telling. I love this graphic. You know what a fan I am. There is Genevieve over here in the Pacific. Very very clustered tight packet of energy. You get it. All right. By now you understand why I like that. Uh, this particular product. The Vorticity Signature. Then you compare it to 97. Now, that's still a pretty good pocket of energy, or packet, either way, um, and, but it's a little bit less focused, it's a little bit less energized. You can see this is kind of white hot, if you will, indicating a tremendous amount of vorticity uh, and spin the closer to the center that you get. This has less of that. And this is a trackable feature, so let's watch this over the coming days as it heads into this general, general area and we'll see what happens. There's the potential that it could get up here and cause some problems. There's definitely that potential. Now for 98L, and let's zoom in on this just a little bit to help our illustrative purposes. All right, so 98L, you say, well, where is it? You can clearly see 97 here. You see Genevieve over here, and um, then you got all this energy out here. There's a little piece of vorticity concentrated pretty much right over the Cabo Verde Islands, used to be the Cape Verde Islands, another large uh, area here, more over here. This is a lot of energy spread out over a pretty large area. When is it going to look like this? Well, I don't know the answer to that, and that's what the computer models, the numeric weather prediction, is trying to figure out. When does all of this wrap up bundle itself and then take off in a certain direction. You know, will it be more southerly? Um, does it organize very quick and try to catch this trough that's out here? Yeah, probably not. Probably not. I think it's going to take longer to develop and we'll see what happens. You know, we've seen the different runs. The Euro one run will be like, oh my goodness, and then the next time it's like, oh, well, not so much. 
The GFS is kind of still trying to play catch up, it seems. It's just difficult, but when you have such a large area of energy, that tells me right there, well, we're going to have to just be patient, watch and see what happens, which is a good thing. We don't have anything pressing right now, and that's great, obviously. But the bad thing is, the farther west this gets, the less time we do have if it decides to go and go quickly. And we saw that with Harvey. We only had about two days, and that thing jumped and went very quickly. Michael escalated very quickly. Even Katrina, thinking back, thinking back way, way back 15 years ago, Katrina, you know, from a, one tropical wave died out, kind of became something else. Some, you know, if you remember that evolution, it wasn't a trackable feature all the way across. It was kind of a, a mix between two systems. I think uh, one depression, TD10 or something, died out, and then Katrina got born. I'd, I have to go back and read the history. You'd think I would have it perfectly memorized, but. I can't remember everything. I just know the important part is that Katrina was a five-day event from start to finish. It really was. Very short fuse system. Rita was the same way here in the Florida Straits. And then it really got its act together on its way up, uh, actually, towards the Texas-Louisiana border. The, the point is, when they get farther to the west, that gives us less time. And I know that sounds obvious, but it's my job to keep you reminded of these things so that you don't look at it and go, well, it's a mess. I'm going to go and hide for five days. I don't care about all this bad news. Well, in five days, it could be knocking on your door. All right, so just be mindful of that. So I want to focus on 97L as we kind of wrap things up on discussion number one for today. And this is interesting. The intensity guidance for 97 is actually pretty bullish. Yeah, I mean, okay. Um, and even the, this is like the GFS, the AVNI, eh, not so much. But the rest of the guidance is definitely bullish. This is probably seeing some kind of land interaction. That's why it drops off there. Uh, but the statistical, right here, that's the ships, the statistical hurricane intensity prediction scheme. Um, that's what ships stands for, or ship. And uh, that's pretty bullish right up into CAT 2 at about five days time okay interesting how about track well it makes sense this area not so favorable this area yes favorable uh, from a lot of different perspectives okay so again this reminds me so much of Harvey's evolution in terms of how it got started it kind of was uh, the zombie mode and then we know what happened okay so we cannot go to sleep on this. A lot of people watching 98L, but you got to watch 97 too. And here's a good reason. Whoops, there we go. A good reason why. Right now, I mean, come on. It's located uh, roughly in this vicinity in here. And it's headed to, yup, I mean, geez, the warmest upper ocean. That doesn't even make sense. It is the most potent upper ocean heat content area in the Western Hemisphere, period. And if the upper level winds become favorable, dry air won't be much of an issue at all. It's going to be the shear and the organization, the vorticity. Can it concentrate its vorticity and get itself bundled? And if it does, it could strengthen and do so pretty quickly. And then just looking at other scenarios, let's assume that it gets going through here, comes across and heads in the general direction of the South Central Gulf of Mexico, you know, leaving open the possibility of anything like that, right? Maybe, you know, and it could just come on over here. It still has plenty of very high upper ocean heat content to work with, uh, and we know how that can play into the, I mean, it doesn't have to be this white hot sort of stuff. And, you know, trust me, this is plenty of fuel right here. The entire Gulf of Mexico north of about 25 degrees latitude right there. Most of this surface water in here is 30 Celsius, you know, about 86, 87 degrees Fahrenheit. So we really, really need to watch 97 while we also think about, well, let's see what happens with 98. We see those Euro ensemble runs that sends it towards Florida. And I know we've all seen it. I'm not going to deny it. And that was yesterday. I didn't even look at the overnight ensembles, but we got to look at what's in front of us, and right now that's 97L already in the Eastern Caribbean. All right. So again, my plan 
I'll wait until the 12Z guidance comes out, including the Euro, so probably around 4 p.m. Eastern, I'll start to put together the video, maybe even have it done, we'll see. Um, and it's always on Patreon first, just to let you know. Our Patreon, I'll put the, the link to Patreon, is always in our description, just so you know that. So I always put these videos on Patreon first. It's one of the benefits of being a patron, doesn't matter what level. You know, you get a 15 to 20 minute head start for what it's worth. And for some people, it's worth a lot. Uh, and I appreciate that. It's just a little perk. Um, so it goes on Patreon first, then I make these public. I try to publish them on Facebook. I did the one yesterday, but I, I didn't hit the publish tab. It's like, come on, the button. Um, and I'm on Twitter. That's the at Hurricane track right there. And of course, YouTube, subscribe to the channel. And you get notified, hopefully, when I do a future update. All right, so yeah, I'll be back this afternoon with a look at what's going on with our two systems. Uh, and we'll take it, you know, a half a day at a time, I guess. Every 12 hours, it seems that things change. You know how it goes. It's that time of year. We will all be on top of it together. All right? All right. Have a good rest of your morning and early afternoon and all that. I'll be back with you later this afternoon, and we'll see what's up. I am Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. We'll talk again in a few hours.